Hey everyone, welcome to all the new subscribers, thank you so much. You might not know but I'm a nurse and I do community nursing and I thought I would take you along for the day and show you what I do. I can't take you in to the clients but I can certainly tell you about the sorts of things that I do when I'm with the clients. So come with me. So unfortunately the very first thing that's happened is that my computer doesn't work. So I've rung the office, had them take off the first couple of clients and give them to somebody else. Unfortunately that's going to make someone else's day a bit harder. And I have to have a new computer sent out to me and the computers are about an hour away. So I'm about to ring the office and get a new computer. So I'm at my first client and it's for wound care and there are many reasons that we go to somebody for wound care. Sometimes it's surgical, they've come home from hospital, but mostly our clients are elderly and so it has a lot to do with their circulation and your circulation can be impacted by all sorts of things, your veins, your arteries, you could have cardiac disease, you could have diabetes. I'll explain a bit more once I've seen this person. So I've seen that client and it was a very easy wound care and like I said before there are a number of reasons. I wanted to have a quick talk about diabetes. I don't believe this client has diabetes. I'm not going to say anything that's going to identify any of the clients that's just not professional. But I wanted to have a talk about diabetes and what diabetes does, sugar is very it, corrosive to our blood vessels and so if our blood sugars are too high then what can happen is that the small capillaries get corroded away and when the capillaries get corroded away then we don't get adequate blood supply and the furthest part of our body gets affected so you often see people as they get older particularly with type 2 diabetes um, because you don't know that you've got it until the doctor does a test and then all of a sudden you start to get wounds in your feet and the first thing that you know that you've got diabetes is that your skin doesn't heal and so if that's the case with you go to your GP and get it checked out and just ask them for a diabetes check um, it can create wounds um, particularly in your feet and it, they take a very long time to heal there are some people who in fact have had ulcers in their feet because of diabetes for five and six years and that's a long time to have a wound that won't heal and we often see people who have amputations of their toes and sometimes of their whole foot um, just because of diabetes and just because the circulation isn't the same down to our feet because our diabetes has gone unnoticed so if you're noticing any of the symptoms of diabetes Go, go to your GP, ask for a, a blood sugar test or a diabetes test and they'll be able to follow you up and make sure that you keep your feet and keep your eyes and keep your kidneys because they're the things that rely on the small blood vessels as well, the capillaries. I'm at my second client and again I'm here attending somebody's wound and again I'm not going to say anything that's going to identify the client one of the things I did want to talk about is how closely we work with allied health and with hospitals and so often people will see the podiatrist um, they will be part of an outpatients clinic they might have come home with surgery and so uh, we take our direction from them they're the ones who've done the surgery they're the ones who are doing the ongoing care and we go in as a as a support service and do the wound care in between them seeing their outpatients or their their allied health and so it's really important that we maintain a relationship 
with all of the people we're not just out here on the road doing our own thing and I think that's one of the things that I like about community nursing is that as much as we're autonomous and we do go out and we do nurse people in their own homes that we're actually part of the bigger picture we're part of the hospital system we're part of the allied health system um, even though we're independent now the other thing we need to do is have a break we need to be able to have our lunch breaks, have our morning tea, have our afternoon tea, but we also need to be mindful that people need to be seen within a certain time frame. People that we see for medications need to be seen, people with insulin need to be seen around their meal times. People who are on cardiac medications usually need to be seen twice a day and 12 hours apart. Um, people who are on Parkinson's medications need to be see f seen four or five times a day. So the scheduling and the timing of all these visits is really quite crucial. So I've got 10 minutes just to stop and have a bit of a breather and then I need to go and see another lady. It's lunchtime, guess what I'm doing? I'm administering insulin. <laughs> so I got myself a bit lost. And sometimes that happens when you're driving from person's house to person's house and you don't always know who the clients are, you don't always know the area, you're not familiar to it. Now in our organisation we have an area that we normally look after but if someone calls in sick or something happens you actually need to pick up some clients from other people, clients that you might never have seen before and in areas that you've never been to before. So I went down a street thinking that I knew where I was going and no I didn't. So it's also the day after payday and I also stopped and got myself some lunch. Not that it's very healthy but I don't do it very often. Perhaps once a fortnight I'll stop and get something. But the only thing that I drove past was a takeaway hamburger place. So I've had a hamburger and I've I'm having chips now I've just seen somebody for a wound and somebody for insulin now the insulin it's a brand new insulin there are so many things that are happening in the world of diabetes which is just fantastic um, there's a new insulin called Rhizodeg 3070 and the numbers after the name of the insulin is how much quick acting and how much long acting insulin there is. So you have it with a meal and so the 30 units are, or the 30% of the insulin that is quick acting will help you to digest that meal and you have it with the main meal of your day. So if your main meal is at lunchtime, you have it at lunchtime, which is why I just went. Or if your main meal is in the evening, you go in the evening and you administer the insulin with their evening meal. And you need to eat within 20 minutes, half an hour of that particular insulin. There are lots of other different sorts of insulin too, and we, we administer them all. We administer them all. And so we are like the hospital nurses, but we come out to your home. So my next client needs to have their catheter change. And I'm not going to identify where I am or who the person is. Now, some people, you're probably cringing, thinking, oh my goodness, a catheter. Some catheters don't go in through the urethra. They're the ones you normally have in hospital and then they take them out and, and you're right to go. But some people have trouble with their urethras. You know, they might have some scar tissue, they might have been damaged, they might have had cancer. It, all sorts of reasons for people to have a damaged urethra and so what they do is they make a little surgical incision through your abdomen and the catheter goes into the bladder that way and so it's normally no pain for the person there's normally no cringe impact because you're putting it into the penis or the or in, in through the urethra um, and so that's what I'm about to do after I've had lunch and look to be honest we can eat lunch in any circumstances we can have any conversation because it's just a part of the body it's not a gross part of the body it's not a part of the body to be cringed at it's just a part of the body like your arms and your legs so it 
we go in and we will do the procedure and we will leave and it, we might as well have gone in and cut somebody's hair or you know given them a sponge bath um, it, there is no difference it's just a part of the body so I'm going to finish my lunch <laughs> And it, I'm going to make sure I'm actually in the right place and not lost. And I'll see you after I've finished. I've just had a call out and it puts me a little bit behind, but that's neither here nor there. The idea of having a nursing service on board is that if you get into trouble at any time whatsoever, you can ring the nursing service and they can send somebody out to help. And so I had to drive a little bit, that's okay. I got lost a little bit, that's okay too. Um, but I was able to help the person and I was called an angel on the way out. And 30 years of accounting, you can't describe what it means to have somebody call you an angel because you have helped them so immensely just by a little visit. And this is why I do nursing. This is why I continue to be paid low wages, you know, as all nurses are paid low wages, we're never paid enough. Um, but to put a smile on somebody's face where they were either in pain or they were worried or it, something had happened, maybe their dressing had fallen off or their catheter had come out um, or their catheter had blocked um, or they were having headaches after taking a new medication, you know, all of those sorts of things. When we can alleviate the worry of someone and it puts a smile on their face to the point that they call the visiting nurse an angel, it, that's just worth it. It really is just worth it. We also get new people that come onto our books and we have a whole heap of assessments to make sure that they're not going to fall through the cracks because often people will come home from hospital and they'll come home from hospital with perhaps some medication support and that we'll go in and we'll help them with their tablets. Maybe they mucked them up and took too many or, you know, they forgot to take them. You know, all sorts of things can happen when people um, get older and perhaps a bit forgetful. And it... The importance of actually liaising with the hospital and allied health and all of the other ancillary healthcare providers is that when we do our assessments, when we put somebody on the books, it means that they don't fall through the cracks. It means that we can say, mm, this person's got a bit of memory trouble. This person needs a bit of medication support. This person's falling over. You know, it, people with Parkinson's, for example, you know, that's a progressive disease and we can actually keep an eye on their mobility and make sure that they've got an occupational therapist that can help them with, a, you know, their supports that they need in the house. Um, people with diabetes, we can make sure that they've got the education that they need to look after their feet, to look after their eyes, make sure they're eating properly, those sorts of things. And so... Us going out just to give somebody their tablets isn't just us going out to give somebody their tablets. It's about looking after the whole person and it's also about looking after the family as well. You know, they, it, we've got people who are burnt out from being carers, you know, and it, we have to be able to identify that and to say, okay, you're under a bit of stress. How about we organise a bit of respite for your husband or wife or your daughter or your father or whoever the, the person needs to be? And we can arrange that, you know, and so we can look after the whole family. So it, it being a nurse, it, we are a bit of a jack of all trades. All right, let's keep going. So I've just been in to see a client who I've seen every day for the last three years and they're just lovely just absolutely lovely but some people aren't so lovely but most people are kind and most people are nice unless something's worrying them and it's our job to kind of get behind that you know if somebody has cancer and you're going in to give them a blood thinning injection then they're really worried about the cancer and so that's going to make their reaction to you coming in remind them of the cancer and on top of that you have to give them a needle into their stomach 
and so they can be a bit hostile sometimes people can be a bit hostile sometimes people can be a bit aloof sometimes people can flinch where it, it's at the crucial point and you actually cause them more pain instead of less so what we do is actually a role of utmost privilege we go into a person's home where they have health issues they are vulnerable and oftentimes they are frightened and it's our job to alleviate the fear and to attend to the care and make sure that they're looked after in the very best way they can and hopefully the next time we go in they won't be so frightened and there'll be no need for any angst or anger or hostility. Sometimes we just get people who are cranky and that's just them but that's the nature of the job you know you get the good with the bad. So I'm all done, got my beautiful new computer, I'm just going to go inside, put the kettle on, have a cup of tea. If you've enjoyed today's video, just a little bit about, you know, nursing and about what a community nurse does for the day. Um, the computer breaking is not a standard part of the day, but the types of things that I spoke about is, is a typical day. It's, it's what we do, we go out and we see people and we help keep them at home and st keep them out of hospital, keep them out of nursing homes and support them and their families when they're a little bit vulnerable. And that's a privilege and I like my job. So if you're enjoying the videos, please hit the subscribe button, it helps me a great deal hit the bell and share the love and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.